Hey nerds, I'm Kaya, and I'm back with another exciting episode of Yellow Spandex. You guys have been begging us to do a Batman episode for a while, but it's not like I needed much convincing. I'm here for Batman anytime. I'm obsessed with like all his different looks, but it would be impossible to cover all that spandex in one episode. So don't worry, we're gonna definitely do his comic and live action costumes, his villains, and maybe even a special look at the Batmobile. But for part one, we're gonna start with the median that made me a nerd in the first place because I'm crazy about Batman's animated evolution. We don't have time to cover all the DC animated movies since there's about 20 million and they each draw Batman a different way. So we're gonna stick to TV and start at the beginning with Filmation Batman. The Cape Crusader made his first animated appearance as part of Filmation's Batman Superman Hour in 1968, unless you count the intro to the 66 live action series. <laughs> The animation is pretty wonky and they're constantly reusing footage, but the character designs aren't bad. They're like those designs I would see on those retro lunchboxes and I really wanted one and my dad didn't get me one, but whatever, that's fine. That's they're based on Neil Adams' 1964 Batman redesign. So we've got the oval behind the bat symbol and the little eyebrows drawn on the shadowy part of his mask. The only real difference is that the gray parts of his costume are light blue for some reason. The show only lasted about a year, but Filmation rebooted it in 1977 as The New Adventures of Batman and Robin. It literally used the same models from the first show and even recycled the same bits of animation. So what's new about these adventures? Unlike the first cartoon, Adam West and Burt Ward were back to reprise their roles as the dynamic duo. You're getting tough, dick. Are you really gonna hold me to our bet? I sure am. You're cooking all the meals for a whole week, my boy. And they had a new friend in the form of a magical it named Batmite. Ta-da! <sighs> Batmite, I thought we told you to stay in your own world and out of our hair. I tried. I really did. But it was dreadfully boring. He's actually been part of the Batman comics since the 50s. He's in Brave and the Bold too, but we'll get to that later. Filmation wasn't the only company with an animated Batman in the 70s. On top of their two series, we got another take of The Dark Knight from Hanna-Barbera. It's Batman and Robin! This version debuted on an episode of the new Scooby-Doo movies in 1972, but that was just a test run for Super Friends the next year. This Batman isn't too different from the Filmation version. He's just redrawn in the smooth, clean style of Space Ghost creator Alex Toth. But as great as these model sheets look, the actual animation was all kinds of f***ed up. I mean, like, I still watch them, love them, but looking at it now, like, Jesus Christ. See, back then, cartoons were still strictly for kids, and studios pumped them out as fast and cheap as possible, at least until Batman the Animated Series changed everything in 1992. Ha, where do I even start? Batman the Animated Series is what made me as a human being. It was my favorite cartoon as a child because like I watched like X-Men Evolution, I watched Yu-Gi-Oh, I watched all those other cartoons, but Batman the Animated Series like stayed with me. And I would go back and watch the cool title sequences and Harley Quinn was made there. It was the first time I heard Mark Hamill's Joker and like, it just hands down, best thing I've ever seen in my life, will always be the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Love Batman the Animated Series. Okay, great. Nora! Nora! My God, yes, it would move me to tears if I still had tears to shed. Moving on, a big part of Batman's success was the brilliant art design of Bruce Timm and Eric Radomski. Tim made these awesome model sheets that explained everything from the way Batman's ears point to when it's acceptable to cheat with the length of his cape. Capes are cool, like when they come, when it comes straight down and like makes like a little circle around him, he looks like a bat. It's cool. These designs established the visual language for DC's animated universe and the look would evolve over the next 15 years. After two seasons, the Batman team redesigned their characters to match the crisper look of the Superman cartoon. They phased out curves and drew the characters with more sharp angles and straight lines, which in my opinion fits more Batman's aesthetic. It makes him more edgy and dangerous. Tim also ditched the yellow oval and made Batman's cape and cowl all black. Also, utility belt pouches, points of practicality. I wasn't originally going to include Batman Beyond because it's such a radical departure and Terry McGinnis isn't technically our Batman. McGinnis, what are you doing? But Bruce does wear the new black and red suit in the first episode, so I'll allow it. 
Batman got one more redesign when it came time for the Justice League cartoon. Man, going through these cartoons are hard, man. Like, I went to rant about all of them. Justice League has, like, my favorite Batman personality-wise. Batman to all points. I could use some air support, since I can't fly at all. But I'm just gonna keep talking about his looks. They brought some of the color back to his costume and made his ears even longer and spookier. He also has a heel on his boot, so I don't wanna hear any more complaining about Wonder Woman wearing wedges. After the DCAU ended, the next show had a hard act to follow. It was simply called The Batman. The characters were designed by Jeff Matsuda, the guy who did the Jackie Chan adventures. Like, f I love the Jackie Chan adventures. That was such a good series. One more thing. I also brought the antidotes that did not work. Maybe if I mix them together. Hiya! Anyways, we're like peak childhood for me right now. But I'm still not the biggest fan of the style for Batman. It's a little too anime for me, but at the same time, not anime enough. Bruce Wayne looks like a 12-year-old caveman and everyone's proportions are just a little too crazy. I'm not even gonna get into the Joker with dreads. I hate it. Speaking of threads, think this is a good look for me? No, his stupid f***ing dreads look so stupid. And I'm like, okay, great, we're gonna try a new Joker. But I'm like, he looks stupid. He doesn't look like the Joker. He looks like someone who like wants to be the Joker. But like, it also sucks because his voice acting is so cool. Anyways. Smear free. It's permacloud. As for Bats himself, the oval is back. He's got some cool claws and you're not going to hear me complain about a long ass cape. I love Batman with a long cape down to his ankles. He looks like a f***ing Dementor. It's sick. Anyways, the show lasted for five seasons. Wait, shit, five seasons? Like these shows last way longer than you remember. Like you sit down, you watch a few reruns and you're just like, you forget seasons exist. And next thing you know, you're like 50 episodes deep and you're just like, how did I get here? It was okay, but it was definitely a lot more kid oriented and toyetic than the DCAU stuff. That might not be a fair comparison, but the Batman didn't really do much to distinguish itself. Not like the Brave and the Bold did. Instead of another take on the grim dark Avenger of the night, this series threw back to the wacky Batman of the 50s. You wouldn't hit a lady. Would you? The hammer of justice is unisex. Everything about this show is just joyous and hilarious and fun. There's just so many amazing DC cameos and guest stars and I just like, I love it. It's also my favorite musical anything ever. The Music Meister is amazing. Like, can we just play one of his songs here? The Music Meister sings the song that the world wants to hear. Let's not fight, let's get along for your hypnotic property. The music writer was actually played by Neil Patrick Harris, which is really cool because Neil Patrick Harris later on went on Broadway to be Hedwig and the Angry Inch and was then later taken over by Darren Criss, who then went on to be the music meister in the Flash and Supergirl crossover episode. And it all comes together. Sorry, I love way too much about the music meister. I love him a lot. He's really great. The art style is a tribute to the ghost artists who worked on Batman in the early years. Even though Bob Kane got all the credit, most of his stories were illustrated by artists like Dick Sprang and Sheldon Moldoff. That's where the thick lines, tiny ears, and constant smile came from. The whole show is a love letter to every incarnation of Batman, not just the aggro, moody, I'm not wearing hockey pants version. Unfortunately, that's what the kids these days seem to want. So they canceled The Brave and the Bold for a new computer animated series called Beware the Batman. And yes, I'm still mad. I'm sorry, like this cartoon is just like ugly as sin. I, I can kind of see the style they were going for. The costume is super dark and with the bright yellow belt against all that black, it kind of resembles the Tim Burton movie suit. But this weak ass CGI just makes everyone look like aliens, whatever. The show was canceled after three months and Cartoon Network burned off the last episodes in the 3 a.m. Toonami time slot. Sadly, that's the last Batman solo show to date. All that's left are the team ups. We already talked about the Super Friends in Justice League, so what about the Teen Titans? Teen Titans! Teen Titans is also dope. The first one is the best. The Yo, Slade was amazing. You shouldn't play with fire. Batman is never seen in the first show, but a cute cartoony version does show up in Teen Titans Go. <laughs> Speaking of teenage superheroes, I know Phoenix Ravenclaw would never forgive me if I didn't shout out Young Justice. Hi, Phoenix. His costume looks like a version of the new 52 suit, just with the underwear on the outside still intact. Batman is an absolute badass in this show. Even if I'm a little disappointed, he's not voiced by Kevin Conroy. The new Justice League action cartoon doesn't have that problem, but it feels really weird hearing such a deep, velvety voice coming out of this skinny, tiny Batman. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> this is really more of a kid's show, so I haven't seen a ton of it. I do love the huge logo though, especially how it blends in with his cape. Honestly, Batman's costume never changes too much in his animated incarnations. The art style varies, but the classic cape and cowl are usually pretty consistent. Live action is a whole different story though. So stay tuned because we're saving that one for another episode of Yellow Spandex. Hey guys, it's me. So I already said Batman the Animated Series is my favorite Batman cartoon, but it's like all of this is my childhood so I can understand if people have other favorites. So let me know in the comments. We have other Batman episodes coming up in the future, but for now, subscribe and keep watching. Thanks.